Hi everybody, welcome back. This is instructor Phil Dimitriotis. Today we're going to be talking about doing a perspective turnaround of a character. So some of you have already started our other process, okay? So just to remind you what I'm going to do is let me pull up um, our class blog and I want to show you just some animation sheets here that we were already looking at a little bit earlier, okay? When you do an orthographic view, the thing about the orthographic view is you're giving information to a modeler and you're trying to keep the character completely flat, almost like the same feeling that they're being pressed up against a piece of glass, basically. So we, we don't see the feet overlapping each other or any depth relationships. That's for modelers and that's how 3D people work. That's why they need turnarounds that are flat like that because they're going to be setting up multiple windows in Maya with an image plane and they're going to be building off of that, right? However, though, there's another type of turn and here's a good example, okay? This is more of what we call a perspective turn. Okay, so real quick, let me go over. I have a couple of these um, perspective turns here. And I want to explain to you what some of the differences are and what's happening when you have a overall perspective turn that's taking place. Okay, give me one second. I, I forgot I downloaded two more images here and I wanted to bring them into Photoshop. Okay, so here's the thing that happens in a perspective turn. Okay, some of you need to understand the principle of where a horizon line is, okay? And then the general shape that the character exists in. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sketch on top of this for a minute here, and I'm gonna show you this, okay? In, oops, what happened there? Let's bring that back. Um, in this particular example, right here, and this is why I think this is a great example, um, we see this, we see this is from Balto, okay? And there's a nice character uh, turnaround there of Star, okay? The first thing you're going to notice, and this is just a little secret that I tend to comment to students on, is look at the distance between here and between here, and there is a line of action that goes down the middle of that. That middle line I refer to a lot of times in drawing is a center line, okay? That's the distribution of weight, okay? So basically, every time I look at this character and I come in here and I start drawing that relationship, okay, you can see that this basically with one paw there and one paw here if i were to come back and draw on top of this character okay let me take away those interior lines that i have right there put a new layer up on the top here basically the easiest way to think of your character is that your character exists within a cube so if i come over here right now even though the legs are turning that's okay but i can use that as a measurement mark so if i come over here sorry i just noticed my touch is on there you go, let me turn the touch off, okay? So if I come over here and I'm in Photoshop and I draw out part of that cube shape, and if I do this, okay, this is gonna be huge in helping me establish how I'm looking at my character. Do you see that? There's a dedicated cube there that's rotating. So if I look at this position right here, now we notice that what, the feet are at an angle. Well, that's fine. All we have to do is draw the cube in multiple positions first, and then we can go in there and we can make that same measurement for the feet. Okay, so if we come over here to this cube, that's that cube, and look, there's that angle again of the feet. Do you notice that? So if we look at the distance between here, the end of the cube, and landing right here, and if we were to measure and cross this cube by drawing an X in the middle, that's roughly about one quarter. So every time we're rotating that cube shape, at about the one quarter mark is where the heel is landing. Okay, let me go to red there. It's a little bit easier to see. All right, so what we end up doing is we use cubes and squares in terms of measurement, okay, to rotate different objects. So if I come back over here, and if I take a look, and if I draw this shape again, Now, one of the things, I know this isn't the perspective class, that is a class that I teach here, right? One of the things that's really important to understand about perspective is this principle of a horizon line. Because the horizon line means this. Basically, if I look at this animal right now, what can I see on top of? How do I determine where that horizon line is? Because my horizon line is gonna dictate part of the turn of my cube, okay? So for example here, if I look at this character, can I see right here on top of that nose right now? If I look at that nose and I draw it as a shape here, 
that nose is like this. I can see the top surface right there. Therefore, on this, and then look over here. Can I see the top here? Yes, I can. Okay, can I see the top here? Yes, I can see it there a little bit. Therefore, so here's the principle of the horizon line, okay? Let me, let me create a new image here. Let me go back to here in the perspective view. You have a dedicated horizon, okay? Inside that horizon, if I had a quarter, and I'm holding the quarter right at my horizon line slash eye level, the quarter is going to be this. It's going to be completely flat right there on the horizon. If I, if I pull it underneath the horizon, I'm going to be able to start to see a little bit of the ellipse. As I continue to pull that quarter further away, further away, and further away, my ellipse is going to get greater as it's dipping down under my horizon line. If I pull it the quarter up in the other direction, I see a little bit, I start to see a little bit more, I start to see a little bit more, and I start to see more. Does that make sense? Okay, that's a basic principle. I always use my coffee cup as an example, or if you wanted to, if you want to think about things as cubes, you can use a basic cube shape. Okay, where you think of a cube, if the cube lands right on my horizon line, I might have a cube that looks like this, and this is going to look pretty funny. I'm going to have a cube shape that looks like that, right? Right. But it's because it's landing right at my eye level on my horizon line. If I draw my cube above that, my cube might look like this. Right? And if I raise my cube above that, I'm going to have, oops, I'm going to have a cube that's going to look something like this. Like that. Okay. See the difference? That's really important. Let's come back to that in just a second. Okay. So now when I come over here and I start looking at some characters, one of the things you're going to be able to notice is you're going to find similarities in the way the character is turning in our perspective view. Okay. So in the orthographic view, these feet and a lot of times the arms were drawn like this. They're drawn at a flat angle like that, right? They're not in perspective. Okay. So one of the secrets to doing a really good char character turn is always tell my students this in perspective is we start with the ground plane. We figure out the shape in which the character is turning. So watch this. I'm going to come over here right now, okay, and I'm going to pretend. I'm going to go ahead and throw a horizon line in about right there. Actually, you know what, just in case, let me put it on another layer really fast. There we go. So now I'm going to come in over here and I'm going to throw a horizon line in right about here, okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, pick a vanishing point, I'm going to come in and I'm going to draw the basic square shape that Goofy's feet here are existing within. Okay, do you see that? Boom. That's that square right now. Oops. Sorry, my brush was huge. There. Okay, so now when I get over here, what's happened is this shape is turning. So in principles of perspective, it's going to two vanishing points. So if I come over here, and if I draw a line going back and I have a new vanishing point there, and then this is going to a vanishing point here. So I come back here to this line on the left, to that vanishing point. I draw that other square. I come back to this point, boom. Now I have that, that shape turning, you see it? Okay, something that you could do if this helps you, you can put a pivotal marking point inside your square and then you can rotate it. This is how you do that. Okay, I'm going to do it in red. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cross the inside and I'm going to cross the inside right here. Now I know the middle of my square, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a very light line by holding shift from this middle point and bring it all the way across here. So now every time, now I'm looking at this, which was done by some old school Disney guys, right? What, what's helpful for me is if I pretend I have a part of a thumbtack, let's say, right in here like this. I'm going to have a thumbtack inside that square. And I'm just going to rotate the square with the thumbtack in the same place. Does that make sense? So every time I come over to one of these other positions, that's the middle. I come here, boom. There's my thumbtack now. I'm just rotating the square. So I come over here. If I want to rotate this guy, right? So I'm going to come over here now, take my blue, 
I'm going to go along that line. Look, that goes to a vanishing point off the page. This now goes to a vanishing point there. I come from that vanishing point. Okay, I'm going to come back across here. I, I come back to VP2 over here on the right, and I come over here, and I'm going to draw that other square shape that exists. So if I come over here and I cross that, voila, I'm sort of hitting right about the middle mark. So the reason why I'm doing this thumb pack, thumb, excuse me, thumbtack idea is I'm trying to get you to think of this as taking a piece of paper, holding it still, and rotating it from the middle. Does that make sense? If you do that, you're just rotating a square in multiple positions. Because look at what happens right now if I turn off the goofy character sheet. What do I have? I have the rotation of a base square on the ground plane. So when you go to this perspective view, the, the key differences in this are that now I have a horizon line and that horizon line is going to dictate the position of the feet on what we call a graft plane, on a perspective plane, okay? Well, the same thing for this, okay, applies to the hands as well. So look, if I come up here, if here's my horizon line, and if I Goofy has a hand that's right here, okay, if I draw back towards, if that's a, a particular vanishing point, I can come back and say, well, if that hand's here and I draw a line receding this way, the other hand should hit about here because now I'm dealing with angles that are receding downward. Does that make sense? Going to a vanishing point. Now, here's, here's a good question as I have students go, but do I have to follow the vanishing point exactly? Well, that's a tough one because technically, if we look at how the feet are existing, they're in a particular plane that's rotating, right? But sometimes if I get in here and if I pick that point and say, okay, all the body is going to be on that point, it's going to be a little foreshortened because in the rules of perspective, I have a vanishing point right here and I'm going to have a high amount of convergence happening because that vanishing point is so close. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily have to be, you want it to feel right in terms of the perspective. What I like to do sometimes when I do a turnaround is I like to raise this horizon line up a little bit and, and just have a general feel and understand where the arms are hitting. Here, the arms are right across. So here, we can look at this and go, well, there's going to be a little bit of slight convergence maybe happening in here, or I can just sort of, maybe the arm, if I look at this pr proportion here, I look at the other side, um, he's pretty much in parallel relationship to himself. So the problem is, is it depends on the character. If your character has a real thin upper structure like this, you can just turn him and you can keep most of these lines all in relationship to each other. So the hand is ending, the wrist is ending, right? Because his body's really compact, but the feet are doing this. The feet are spreading out right now in a V. Do you see that? They're in a big V. Because of that, they're going to be in a plane and we're going to see the feet turning. Okay, so let's go take a look at, at some other different, some other model sheets. Okay, that might guide you along in part of this process, all right? Um, when we look over here, one of the things that's happening with this character, and this is really a, a great example, is because the character has legs that are in different position, okay, because it's a wolf, right? So if we take a look at this, we're going to have this sort of base perspective shape here, okay? There's that square that's rotating. So when I look at this, I see a horizon line probably about right here in the piece. So I would go in and use that horizon line to guide the character along for the most part. The thing about perspective is when we get to this upper body, we don't have anything that protrudes out really far, does it? So if this character had an arm that went out way this way and then an arm over here that went way this way, we would have to figure out that perspective shape of that big plane turning in perspective. Does that make sense? And there it's going to be slightly affected. Okay. However, though, for what we're doing for the most part, all you really need to think about is dropping a horizon line in there and starting with the simple shape. Don't start with the details. Take the box shape and start to rotate part of the box. So if I come over here, I'm just going to freehand this, and you can see it. We have a center line. We have part of our box shape that comes this way and it comes this way, boom. So if I was drawing this character and I were to start in my perspective view, I would not be doing it with lines going across. 
Okay, I would do that later. The first thing I would do is I would draw the cube shape that the character exists in, and I would rotate the cube, but most importantly, I start here. I start from the ground up, and I rotate that cube going across. Okay, once you start from the ground and you get, I mean, look at this. This is just basically a side view like this in here. That's all that is. So all I'm doing is coming in here and rotating this, but the horizon line is key because the horizon line is going to give me this feeling of understanding the depth between here and here, and between there and there, here, oops, there and there. See that? That's huge for me is understanding the position of that because even if I come up from the center here and look at where these center lines are hitting, when, what do you know? It's hitting right at the base of the rib cage every time, the back of the rib cage. That's important for me to understand. Okay, I use this measurement when I teach some other, my perspective class, we talk about drawing. We use this measurement all the time to talk about what's happening and how to draw something that's anchoring to part of a ground plane. Okay, and then the results from this up here where the shapes and the boxes are taking place ends up being this. This is what happens when we go back over it and we address all the line and all the other detail. Okay, now, nail down the drawing of the box shape first, okay? We don't want to skip part of that. I want to show you Christina's work here. Christina has a pretty good turnaround, okay? Now, there's an argument to be made here. If you look at this character and this character, um, you can see the feet are very flat here because that's the orthographic view, right? Here, the feet, and she, what she did is she put a little gray plane in there to show you how that plane was rotating. Do you see it? Okay. However, though, one of the things that was really hard in this view was this three-quarter view over here was getting the arms to protrude out and come away from part of the body. Okay. All right. So to, let's discuss that for a minute because this is something that I noticed in part of the reviews today that's going to help you guys out that you have to do. So let's say on your character, you decide to start with a base horizon line. It's a good idea, right? Then I could come over here and I might say like, hey, here's my character in sort of this front view, all right? But my character has a little bit, I can see a little bit of one side. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna draw a part of this box. Okay, here's a term some of you don't know yet. It's called drawing through the shape. If I come through here, find my vanishing point, I come back here, drawing through the shape is figuring out the back side of the boxes that we can't see in our, pers in our front perspective view, okay? Oops, sorry, I had a little bit of slip right there. Should be about there, and there we go. That one should be about there, okay? There, so there's my box shape that I have. Where's my horizon line? It's right in the middle, okay? What's important about this is if I have arms extruding from the body in some way, I could actually conduct a type of measurement by dividing up spaces in my box and figuring out where that arm is as I rotate part of my character. That's the one thing that's a little different inside my perspective view. So watch, what I'm gonna do right now is check this out. This is gonna make your life really easy. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna cross, I'm gonna find the middle, right? And then I'm gonna come to this middle and I'm going to draw a line that goes right across, okay? Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start to rotate this box from multiple angles. If you really wanted to, you could do this as well. You could come up to the top, you can cross it, you could find part of the middle. Here, I'm going to hold shift in Photoshop. There it goes, okay? Oops, I'm a little short there. Get that other, there we go, all the way over there. Okay, now I'm going to come over here I'm just going to start with the box. I'm going to rotate my box right now. Okay, so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put a line in here. I'm going to pick a VP, which is off the page over there. I'm going to come in here. Let's say I'm going to pick about right there for that guy. Okay, the secret in two point, that should feel like a 90 degree angle, right? If this angle is like this, that's not a 90. That's not a 90, okay? A 90 is when it sort of gets that 90 degree, that perpendicular feel to it. That's called an acute angle. That's an ob obtuse angle, okay? There's a difference there. That's why in part of this class, 
we had numerous advisories of other classes you should have taken before. Okay, now that I get this down, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm trying to make sure this is going to be the middle of my square. So I have that vanishing point here. I'm, I'm going to come over here, draw a line through part of the middle, right there. I'm going to come back over to the other vanishing point, and I'm just going to sort of eyeball this to make sure that my box is looking pretty correct. That's feeling pretty good. And I'm going to come back. If I know, if I want to know where to cut my box in half, all I have to do is find the 45 in there, and if I draw a line across, come back over, I found that other edge. That's going to be about the rotation of my of my square shape on the other side. Okay. Now that I have that done, I'm going to come in here, draw some vertical lines that are coming up. Okay. Let's come back in here. I know where it's going to hit. Okay. Actually, sometimes you can do a little measure line like this. You can come over and hit an end like right there, and then you can come back to a vanishing point and say, look, that line's going to go up now that way. If I come back to here, that line's going to come back to this side. I can draw through the shape. Okay back to my other vanishing point, get that in. Oops, had a little bit of slip there. There, now I see that shape rotating, right? The only catch is, is that as it's rotating, this is a little bit smaller. So what I need to do, measuring right over here, was a little inaccurate because the height now is a little different. So all I have to do is just raise that a teeny bit more to make sure it's sort of on par. Okay, if I look at that and I come over here and look, okay, my goal, is to have that middle line. Right now, the middle of my square is right there, right? So if I need to raise it a little bit, that's easy. All we do is we find the middle, we come up here, we raise it to about there. We take that distance, we add it in here, go back to my vanishing points, okay? Now I have the accurate measurement of that box rotating, right? Okay, so hold on a minute, let me do draw draw through the shape, excuse me. Let me get that in there. Let's go back to this other vanishing point. Come back over to here. Boom. There it is. Okay. So now I have that box rotating there. So the next one now, let's put it aside. Um, well, that was sort of a side view here. So here's a little cool little secret that you can do, right? The rules of perspective. These vanishing points are steady. One's right there, one's over there, right? So what I can do is take my marquee now. I can take part of that guy, copy, paste, bring him over here in Photoshop like this, okay? And now this feels pretty like an, a box. What if I was more of a rectangle? Well, I can flip it in Photoshop. If I go to transform, if I right click in the transform option and tell it to flip horizontally, and now it's flipped that box right over to the other side. I just need to make sure the vanishing points are landing in the same place and they are. So if I flip that guy over there, boom, I now have him that way to look at him for the other side, okay? So, and the thing is about the other part of my turnaround is here we're looking at him at a little bit of a side view. I can even take part of this box here. This is a front view looking at a little bit of the right side, right? So if I flip that box over, it now gives me the back view looking at a little bit of the left side. Does that make sense? So if I copy that guy, oops, wrong layer, my bad. And I bring them over here, make sure the lines are steady, transform, tell it to flip horizontally, boom, okay? Now the one thing I don't have is an exact side view yet, but that's easy. All I have to do is come in here and move the vanishing point sort of in the middle and I can get the exact side view. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. What I'm gonna do really quick though, is I've noticed I've run out a little bit of paper room here. So I'm gonna select all my layers, hit transform, I'm going to make these just a teeny bit smaller, okay? I'm going to come over and I'm going to take these two views here on the side. I'm going to move them over here to the side, like so, okay? Now I'm going to come back up in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my character in a perspective view completely turned, which guess what? I mean, here's a little secret in how to do that. I can steal the front of this box and move the vanishing point over. Let me show you how I do that. Watch, I'm gonna copy just the front of the box. You see that? Copy, paste, boom. Okay, whoa, that's weird. Let's try that again. I was on the wrong layer there, that's why. 
copy, paste. I'm going to bring that guy right here. See how my lines are horizontal to it? Now watch. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to erase the inside of my character. All right, I still have this, which is important to me. I have the outside of the box right here. Now that I have that outside shape, I'm just going to move the vanishing point right here in the middle. Actually, it happens. I'm just going to use that vanishing point right there. Okay. So look, I'm going to come over here now and draw a line going in this way. Draw a line going in here. Look, what do I know? I know the halfway point is right here. So some of you that haven't had perspective, once I know that, there's a way to figure out the other side. There's a term called proportional division that I could do. And what you do with proportional division is we just come over. If we draw a line from here through part of that middle mark and come back, it just gives us the, the which is similar, it's the opposite side. So I get in here now, okay? I erase these over draw lines. I'm gonna take my lines, go vertical with them, like so, okay? I, I can have a good idea of where my box pretty much ends about there come back I draw my other diagonal lines coming across like so like so and watch what happens when I cross the top of this that line is gonna land right in the middle boom see that even though I'm my ruler is slipping a little bit of my Cintiq here that's okay right there there it is okay so all I did was took this view here this view right here, and instead of the vanishing point being right there, I just moved the vanishing point right there. You see how I did that? I just grabbed that point, moved it to the left. This facade still stays the same. Do you see it? Understand that? So now, look at what I have. Now I have a front view with front, and I can see the right of the character. Now I have the character turning this way to the right, so I have a three quarter view where I'm looking at now is the character's turning the right side. I have a complete side view of the character and I get here and now the character is completely turned where I'm starting to get this three quarter view but now I'm going to start to see the opposite side and then I get over to here and then I have my character which could be a complete back where now I'm looking at the left side of the character. This being the left side, right? Right, so look, that right there, boom. That's my character turn around right in front of me, okay? All I have to do is go in there now, and I have to just map out the proportions and get my character in there and make sure everything's matching up. That's it. But do you see how I exist off of this? This is my horizon line, okay? Depending on your character is going to depend where you put your horizon line. Some characters, some of you guys had really tall characters. Some of you had characters that were like sort of blocky characters like this. Some people of you had characters that were, you know, low in the middle with huge head balls. Okay. You decide where you want to put your horizon line that fits your character better. I personally like this area here. I either like in the middle or I like a little bit lower. Boom. That easy. Draw the box, and now once you have the box down here, you understand the basics of proportion, okay? And the great thing about understanding this is this, is that once I, let me delete that little area there, okay? And let me put another layer on top, is that if I have a character that's in here, let's, I'm just going to sketch this really quick, okay? Let's say my character's, oops, let's say my character's waist is about here, and his upper body is like so. And now his arms protrude out to here. See that? And if I come here, I draw through the shape. And I know where that other arm, I measure the distance from here to here. So I come over here, I measure that distance. Now I see where that arm protrudes out to. Do you see that? Now what I can do is here's the golden thing. Watch, transfer this line over to here. So now I understand here's the waist, right? Now in here, where was the center line? The center line, center lines are key. The center line was going this way and going down. See the center line going down? So the center line goes down here. That's the back of the character right there, right? Now here, when I draw this guy, so if I come over here, I take that shape again. But now my character's turning, right? So where's my center line now? 
my center line's here. Boom, it's going this way, going that way, coming back up, going right through here. Do you see that? That's the center line now in my character. Now, to draw the arms, look at the, dis what was the distance from here to the hand. You see that? Now I could take that distance, come find the other center line, which is here on the side, which crosses right here like this. Do you see how I found that? It's like a major and minor axis, right? Now that I know that, now I come from here and I draw out this way a little bit and end about there. That's about the same distance. And now if I connect from the end here, boom. That's that arm now coming out in perspective. That's how it's going to come out even though the body ends about there. Does that make sense? Now on the back side, I can figure that out. If I come up here, that's about the arm mark. That's the center line. The arm's going to come out to about there right and then I can draw a line from here to there so on the back side view okay the arm is going to come out about that much does that make sense how I figure that out okay I'm using areas of my character to measure proportions let's say his waist is here let's say his one foot lands about here there's part of his again his center line comes down drops down to the middle of the character, okay? In some weird way, how many of you guys in here have had shish kebab, right? You have that long wooden pole. You need to think that you're taking your character and you're sticking a long access line, a pole. I know, don't kill the character, right? But you gotta think of it like that. You're, you're just, we're talking about basic shapes and you're putting a long little wooden pole or a steel pole right through the middle of them and we're just gonna turn them, we're just gonna rotate them, okay? So now I could take those measurements, look, if this leg comes down here and it ends right here and he has a foot that goes this way and if I come over here his other leg is ending about here the foot goes this way well that's easy here look I come over here I figure the baseline that's his baseline now of his body right where did his foot land right in the middle line here I find that middle line right there do you see that I draw a line down down I figured out it's it's in a little bit right here that's in a little bit, so his foot's gonna land about right here. So then I can connect that. That's leg one, okay, as he's turning. I come over here to the other side. See that? That's leg two now right there, right? And then let's say my character's crotch goes like that. Get that connected, there's my character's crotch now. His foot comes out at an angle. So his foot comes from here and comes out this way at an angle. His foot comes from here and comes out at an angle. Do you see how I did that? Okay? I'm just rotating simple shape in a cube and moving it across. Okay? However, though, remember, just as a reminder, these are the important things that I'm using right now for measuring. I'm using the cross in part of that cube. Sorry. Ruler slip there. It should be about there. To understand the middle, because then I understand the center lines. Look here. I can come down, I can follow that center line, drop it down in the middle. Oops, sorry, I had a little bit of slip there. Boom, and I hit right here, the middle of my, of my square, okay? I know it gets confusing when you have all these drawings, all these lines in here, and I'm using red and blue so you can see it a little bit easier. But does it not make sense if I take this out? That's what we're dealing with right there. That's the secret to everything in art. There is a process with a series of steps that guide you along. The secret to a good turnaround is this right here, folks. It is understanding how to rotate a simple shape because then you can look at your character and you can break out all the different shapes. And if you do this first, the next step that we go into is doing expressions and posing. It makes your life so much easier because now you have a 3D mentality and sensibility of how your character is rotating completely. And that's a difference with a perspective view versus the orthographic view. The orthographic view is flat in front, okay? So some of you had a female character, right? And your female character might have had a head ball like this, and then the character had braids of hair coming out the side like this. But now you can look at this and say, well, hey, here's my center line, there's a center line. Then when you get over here, and you measure that, and you're drawing your character's head rotating from the middle here. Now you know the center line. Now you know 
the opposite center line here and you know where the braid where the where the hole is and now you can see where that shape is coming out of and then you know it on the back side and then you can also come back here and draw that that I was going to call it a, not a pom pom but the braided hair coming out right that's how we figure that stuff out okay so look even even if it's not hair even if it's a hat on the character some of you guys had characters that had this you had a hat on the character that was at a slant let's say this guy has a don't ask me why let's say he has a baseball cap here right so when I get to this point of view here and I map out that head turn that sphere that's turning now I'm turning it look at the low point see that low point I can come over here boom now I know the low point of the hat boom I know the high point well the high points back in about here but on the opposite side right so I know looking at this that the hat now is going to be at an angle like this and the hat is going to be turning that way does that make sense that's how I figure all that information out I can now start rotating the hat because I know what let me draw this in another in a green line I know the front of the character okay I know that there is a line going down that front face I know that there is a line going down that front face in this direction does that make sense okay if you have to do it in different colors every single shape has this every single shape has an, an, an axis line it's going up it's going across like this okay and this one goes this way and then we also have and I'll switch to another color here let's go to orange okay now we have that line going the opposite way we have a line that goes from here divides up here a line comes from here oops sorry Photoshop slip there comes down to here and it goes across oops goes across here and then from here we go straight up and my I'm a little off there that's just the part of the Cintiq there we go that line should hit about there okay we have these lines so look at my body right now as I'm pointing my face right here's my center line there's my side line right my arm has a center line down the arm that's really important for understanding parts of anatomy because I know that if I have this red line right here, I understand where my supernator inserts over the elbow. Your supernator muscle is this muscle that goes right across here, it tenses up like that when you grab something. So by understanding that, I also know where my elbow is. That if this is my my main center line, the elbow was on the side line. Okay, that's part of figure drawing. Part of figure drawing, understanding the proportional aspects of shapes cut and understanding where the bony landmarks are. Seven major bony landmarks. Okay, the wrist, the knee, the jawbone, the seventh vertical vertebrae, the uh, right here, the scapula, up on the, the shoulder blades, we should say, right? And right up in here, okay? Um, and then you even have the hips that come out. Yeah, and then you have the ankles, all right? I think that's all seven. You usually have the inside of the foot. I think I mentioned elbow, right? Seven vertical I mean, uh, bony landmarks you always have whenever you're drawing the figure. And so if you incorporate those in, it matches. All we're doing is taking that same knowledge, we're taking the base of proportion, and what we're doing for our turn is we're fitting it into simple shapes right here. That's where I deleted something. Yeah. Okay. Any questions about that? If you do that, you will be successful in your turnaround. Much more successful. If you don't, and you start, and this is the thing that drives me nuts, is I see students who are like, here's the arm, here's the hand, and they start, and you're like, no, where's the construction? You have to have construction to have the shape that the character exists inside, okay? And that's what you want to do. That's the difference. The orthographic view answered a lot of questions for us. We had a character in one view, right? So let me pull up our, our class blog, right? So when we did the orthographic view, the great thing about part of that orthographic is you might have had a character only in the front view. Well, now you got to draw the character in the side view. That answered a ton of questions on how, you know, the size of the head, the width of the body, the size of the belly, the tuck of the butt, the, the angle of the legs. And a lot of you in here were battling some of those elements, right? Well, now 
we get to take that knowledge from here and then we get to apply it into this perspective view with just think of again that box rotating at a constant angle okay all right i'm going to go ahead and stop the demo here and end it